Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. Our guest in studio is Dr. Leah Milheiser, OBGYN, and she's here today to discuss with us the four forms of female sexual dysfunction. We hear information about male sexual dysfunction, ED and whatnot, but um, female sexual dysfunction or FSD is something that uh, maybe many of us haven't quite uh, heard about. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Milheiser. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Now, you're an, you're an OBGYN. Have you always been interested in uh, women's sexual health at med school? You know, it, it, it even predates that. Mm-hmm. I um, grew up in the 80s, and I used to listen to Dr. Ruth Westheimer's radio show mm-hmm. every Sunday night. And she was a, just a phenom, this force of nature, who would essentially talk to people about their most sensitive mm-hmm concerns and issues. And I just found it amazing that she had such an impact on people's life. And I, I said, you know, whatever I end up doing in my career, I want, I want to be able to have that impact like she has. So I ended up going to medical school. I did, you know, women's health, went into OBGYN and sort of that idea that how can I address women's sexual health was always there. And I will tell you that I went through medical school in the late Mm nineties and I was a second year medical student when Viagra was approved. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget, we had a one-hour lecture on sexual dysfunction, and we spent 59 minutes on erectile dysfunction and this great new drug Viagra that was coming out. We spent one minute on females. And what this person said was, you know, the majority of sexual issues in women are psychological in nature, so I really advise my patients just to go home, relax, have a glass of wine, and they'll be fine. And I remember I thought my head was going to explode when I heard that. I I couldn't believe that that was the solution. Then, you know, Viagra comes out and there are a bunch of what I call menopause age men who are having this renaissance in their sexual function. I mean, they're now able to have erections again. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that their female counterparts who are the same age had been going for years with low sex drive and vaginal dryness and having painful intercourse. And in many marriages, they decided, you know, sexual intercourse is not something we're going to do because of your erectile dysfunction and my issues. So there was this almost like this silent contract Mm -hmm. of we do other forms of sexual intimacy, but not penetration. So lo and behold, Viagra comes out and all of a sudden the men are ready to go and the women are like, wait, what about me? And I don't know if you know this, but in the early sort of 2000, 2001, there was a surge of divorces due to in, uh, people stepping out on the relationship because, again, the women were not able to keep up with their male partners or couldn't give their male partners what they needed. And so we saw in New York especially what were called the Viagra divorces. So as a result, there was really, after Viagra was released, an explosion into the research and understanding behind what are the sexual concerns of women mm-hmm. and what kind of solutions can we find. And what we identified is that, you know, you take a man, they have premature ejaculation. It's a measurable thing. It's objective. They have erectile dysfunction. That's objective. You can see these things happening. What about women? How do you quantify low sexual desire? What do you call normal? Or for a woman who has, you know, lubrication issues, Mm -hmm. what's normal lubrication? What is it? The answer is, it's really a subjective experience. How do you tell a woman, no, your desire should be X. Every woman has their own level of sexual desire. Right, right. And every woman has her own level of desire that's appropriate for her. So when we're talking about sexual dysfunction, and we'll jump into that now, we're really looking at four different disorders. We're looking at hypoactive sexual desire disorder, which is um, has to do with low sex drive. We're talking about arousal disorder, which has to do with genital arousal and subjective arousal. We're talking about orgasmic disorders, and we're talking about the pain disorders. The most common, and I'll get to the definition of sexual dysfunction in a moment, but the most common sexual dysfunction in women is hypoactive sexual desire disorder. It affects about one in 10 women. That's what I've done most of my clinical research in, to show that there actually is a biological basis to this. Sexual dysfunction is not caused by a medication or a disease or, oh, my husband or partner is driving me crazy tonight. 
it is caused by, for example, in this case of HSCD, an imbalance in brain chemicals. So we know this because we did the research and saw that women with HSCD, their brains react very differently to sexual stimuli compared to women without HSCD. And we put women in MRI machines and measured blood flow to their brain to, to sort of understand this. So we know it is a brain chemistry problem. So that's an example of, of the most common sexual dysfunction. Just a second. Now, you say yeah. that women's brains function differently. Uh, they react differently to sexual uh, arousal. Um, are we talking about the same uh, type of sexual arousal? Or can one woman react differently to this type of arousal and then positively to another, whereas you know, the other woman might do exactly the opposite. When we were talking, you know, talking about the different types of arousal, uh, I mean, there are all kinds of arousal. You're absolutely right. There is. So we're talking, so we're talking about two separate things. So, you know, there's the desire component, so low or absent sexual desire. And then there's the arousal component, which could be genital arousal. It could be um, emotional arousal in the brain. And so really what we're looking at in the women who had the low sexual desire or, or HSCD, mm-hmm. these women were exposed to a sexual stimulus. In this case, it was a video that they were watching. Mm-hmm. And we did tons of research to find out what kind of videos women found arousing and what we should use in this particular research study. Mm-hmm. So the, the stimulus was this video. And we asked women to rate how aroused they were by the video. And these women were not really experiencing subjective sexual arousal, Mm -hmm. and they weren't developing desire. So, you know, that's, we did, and their brains reacted differently. We found this area of the brain called the entorhinal cortex. Mm -hmm. It's in the limbic system. And in that area, or in the women with HSCD, they just didn't have any activity in that area of the brain, whereas the women without HSCD did. And what's interesting about the entorhinal cortex is this is an area where women basically process positive emotional memories. Mm -hmm. So there's some idea that, and it's also regulated by norepinephrine and dopamine and and which are sort of the arousal brain chemicals. So we did find there was this biological difference between women with and without HSDD. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the sexual desire uh, disorder. Sexual dysfunction before I kind of go into the others, just to keep in mind, this is a, oh, hey, I've got low libido, but I go on vacation and, you know, it goes away and I feel great. This is a woman who's got chronically, she's chronically impacted by this Mm -hmm. uh, concern Mm -hmm. and it causes her personal distress. She's really bothered by it. So that's how you make the difference between, you know, your everyday waxing and waning desire or arousal or, you know, pain issue versus, nope, no matter what I do, this problem is going to be there. So that's when it becomes dysfunction. When um, when you heard in that uh, one, um, I guess, briefing uh, about Viagra many years ago and the small amount of time that was spent, and that time was pretty condescending at, at best, why do you think that it is so far in the future, you know, fast forward to today, and we still have this huge uh, understanding gap in the sexual uh, needs of women and men as they relate to dysfunction? You know, that's really interesting. I think we've made a huge amount of progress in the past, you know, 18 years. What we've seen, and and I'll tell you where the biggest gap was. The biggest gap was in education of clinicians or healthcare providers. Uh How are you going to get people, women, to open up to their doctors if, or their clinicians, if their uh, providers are not opening up to them. And if you ask, and studies have been done, if you ask doctors why they don't talk about sexual dysfunction with their patients, they'll say, I was never, never educated about it. I don't know how to treat it. I am not always comfortable with that topic of conversation. Mm-hmm. Now that's, you know, from 15 years ago. Fast forward to today. Sexual health curriculums are now, you know, they are sort of commonplace in medical schools around the country. So we are seeing improvement in clinicians and healthcare providers talking to patients about sexual function. There is this recognition of how important it is on a woman's overall health and wellness. 
And even more importantly, I think, is that we know that sexual concerns can be an underlying sign or a sign of an underlying medical condition. For example, low libido can be a sign of depression or hypothyroidism. Um, difficulty with lubrication and genital arousal or change in orgasmic intensity can be a sign of a neurologic disorder or a blood flow issue like um, peripheral vascular disease or diabetes. So very important for healthcare providers to identify a sexual concern. And I, it's not, it really is not the responsibility of the, of the woman to report it. We, I want women to report it. I want women to feel empowered. It's the responsibility of the healthcare provider to ask the question. Great. Well, it's been a pleasure having you in studio today with us, Dr. Milheiser. Hoping you'll come back and speak some more with us. I would love that. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Dr. Leah Milheiser, clinical assistant professor in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology and director of the Female Sexual Medicine Program at Stanford University Medical Center. And she's been with us discussing the four forms of female sexual dysfunction and offering some insight as to why so far in the future we're still having a big understanding gaps in the sexual dysfunction of men and women. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.